Make the juiciest burgers and tastiest meatballs all year long by learning how to grind your own meat at home. In this video, I'm gonna discuss the types of meats to use and the supplies you'll need. And then we're gonna dive into grinding some meat. Two of the biggest perks of grinding your own meat is that one, you have full control of what goes into it, and two, you can actually stretch your budget further by buying cheaper cuts of meat or discounted cuts in bulk and freezing them for use later. It all comes down to one question, what do you have? Today I'm going to make venison meatballs. To make it I'm going to use chuck roast, venison, and some fatty pork belly. Almost all recipes call for some fat, more on that later. Now you wanna make sure you have the supplies you need. Obviously you'll need a meat grinder, and then you'll also need two dies, one larger and one finer. Now I'm just using a simple attachment to a stand mixer. It'll do about five to seven pounds. It's not the most powerful option, but it'll work for my needs. Other items to include in your supply list include two large stainless steel receptacles, one for storing your meat and one for catching your ground product. Then you'll need a kitchen scale and a calculator to determine your fat percentage. Whatever your end state may be, whether it's meatballs or burgers, sausage or salami, that'll determine how much fat you put in there. Now, the fat is important because it creates a texture and a mouthfeel, and it also helps you actually form the patties or the burgers. Super lean meat is much harder to form. For burgers, 10% fat is a good minimum. For sausages or meatballs, however, the 20% range is best. To calculate the fat percentage, there's a simple mathematical formula. Total weight of lean meat times your desired fat percentage equals the total weight of fat needed. A final tip to grinding your own meat is to cut your meat into one inch size cubes ahead of time and put them in the freezer. That's gonna help them from becoming gooey as they're pushed through the grinding die. Also throw in your grinding dies. That'll help you as well and it'll help make sure nothing overheats. So let's grind some meat. I've got my semi-frozen cubes of meat here. I've got three pounds of venison, three pounds of chuck roast and about one pound of fatty pork belly. Now I've got two containers here. I've got one that I'm setting under the grinder and one full of meat. I'm gonna put this all in the hopper and I'm gonna set it to about a four. Starting with the larger die, working at the pace of your grinder, gently press the meat through, alternating between lean and fatty pieces as you go until all of your meat has been used. At this point, you're ready for burgers and meatloaf. But for meatballs or sausages, you'll want to run it again through the fine grinding die. Just simply cover the bowl of ground meat and place it back in the freezer while you clean and reassemble your attachment. Then repeat the process again. Whether this is your inspiration to try this at home or you're a seasoned meat grinding veteran, let me know what you think in the comments section below. And be sure to subscribe to my channel.